Hello everyone and welcome back to DCS World where I'm going to try out the FA18 which is on a free trial. I'm very excited to give it a go and it looks like as far as training missions are concerned they've got quite a lot of them unlike with the F16 so I've got a lot to do and I think this will be a fairly long video as a result. I'm not streaming this at the same time so performance should be a little bit better and but I'm actually going to go through the tutorial instead of just uh, having a fun free flight sort of deal. That said, I'm probably gonna mess up royally. Let's see what happens. Okay, so objective, follow tutorial direction. You'd think that would be easy uh, enough. Hello and welcome to the center. Center. Okay, the well, to this table. may in fact be more basic than I strictly the require. On the left side of the wow, they're really starting us slow on this one. I mean, the other tutorials, the first one is like starting up the plane, which is like one of the more complicated things, aside from firing the weapons. Return to the cockpit, F1. This is like a tutorial for the entire game. It'd be really funny if randomly they fired a missile at you and you exploded during this. This seems like a very calm, cool, and collected plane. And a very calm, cool, and collected tutorial, too. There's a... runway there. I'm sort of tempted to try and land it. Well, I mean, they're sort of giving us a path over the runway, but we're obviously going too fast right now. This concludes this okay, we just did the flyover to to end this of the runway and that's it. Alright. Okay, now cold start. The first thing we need to do is enable the two batteries. This will allow operation of the canopy and power the engine nope. igniter. By the way. You'll also notice that the integrated fuel and engine indicator or IFE, in the lower left portion of the instrument panel will have power. Move the battery switch to the up or on position with a right mouse button click. The Hornet has two fire detection circuits, A and B, that test for fire in the engines, auxiliary power unit, and bleed air system. Place the mouse over the fire okay. switch and so we've got right 3000 PSI on the brake Keep pressure. Keep the mouse button down and do not release it until it runs through all the fire test audio warnings. In addition to the oh, audio warnings, also note the fire test Engine warning fire lights left. on the upper left and right portions Engine of the right instrument fire. panel. Right when it's done, fire. press spacebar. <laughs> what a delightful APU way fire. to start a plane. Let's go through all those. The engines. It has now an APU. Auxiliary power unit, or APU. This is a small, self-contained engine that augments the bleed air system and will start turning the engines for engine starts. Place the APU control switch in the up or on position with the left mouse button. It's ready. Once the green light next to the APU It's so easy to start running, this one. Move the engine crank switch to its right position, marked by the R with the right mouse button click. This will allow the APU to power the air turbine starter or ATS, which in turn allows the aircraft mouse So we've got RPM or to start turning the fan blades within the right engine. Once the right engine RPM has reached 20%, as indicated on the IFE, move the right throttle from off to idle by pressing right shift home. Oh, right this shift home. This will introduce fuel into the engine combustion chamber and start the igniters. Once the right engine RPM has reached 60%, the right engine start cycle is complete and the right generator is automatically engaged. Wow, that's a nice sound right Once there. At 60%, Press space the right engine running and generator power on. Place the left and right digital display indicators, or DDIs, to the day position using right mouse button clicks on both brightness selector knobs. Next, rotate the HUD symbology brightness oh, control here. knob clockwise by placing your mouse over it and rotating your mouse wheel forward. Once you see video displayed on the left and right DDIs and HUD, press space bar. Okay, we've got HUD, and we've got left DDI. Oh, I've got to do these, this one. Okay.
There we go. Bit failures for everything. That's nice. Okay. In the lower, on the left, Interesting the we do all this with just the one engine started. The support page the sound to draw your attention. Okay. Press this button or click on it to acknowledge the caution and extinguish the light. I have acknowledged the caution. Uh, I get the feeling that if I do these things too quickly it doesn't pick up that I did Press it. The okay, there we go. Caution again to restack the caution and advisory notices along the bottom of the left DDI position. Okay, it's on ground. Now it is time to crank the left engine. Go ahead and move the engine crank switch to its left position. And okay, left, left. By left mouse clicking. Once the left engine is at 20% RPM, as indicated on the IFE, move the left throttle from off to idle by pressing right alt home. This will add fuel. Right to the alt home. When the left engine is at 60% RPM, press spacebar to continue. On the FCS page, we have quite a few X's indicating abnormal FCS readings. Yes, we do. Please press and hold the FCS reset button. Located in the back of the left console is the panel for the onboard oxygen generation system, or OBOGS. Go ahead and set the OBOGS. Up on OBOGS is our oxygen system. The left of the IS um, I think press the FCS push button. It says while holding. Okay, so I'll hold, press Y and then press Once that. Once the FCS bit is complete, marked by the beep tone, place the flap switch in the center or half position with the left mouse button click on the switch. Takeoff is done with flaps set to half. Once we are airborne, we'll move them to auto. So it's going through the bit test. Press and hold down the takeoff train button. Upon doing so, you will also closed. press spacebar to continue. Okay, so left control C. This concludes the current. Okay, we started it up. As mentioned earlier, though, there is also an option for automatically starting up the Hornet by pressing the left Windows Home key. You can end the lesson now by pressing the escape key. Alright, we have learned how to start it in theory. So, I may only remember the critical bits. In okay, lesson, taxi and take off. Up and running to the runway directly ahead. Okay, we've got nose wheel steering. They said not more than 75, we're at 71. Uh, well, we're just trying to get to the runway, so I don't know why to do NWS high because that'll cause me to turn. Well, probably right at the end I can do that when we do the 90 degrees. Oh, they want me to stop. Oh, they. I don't know if they want me to throttle down. Before entering the runway, arm the ejection seat by moving the ejection seat safe armed handle on your right in the down nope. position so that the armed label becomes visible. Also, tighten your restraints. Check left and right for traffic. Armed. Increase engine RPM and enter the runway. Once on the runway, align the aircraft down the center line and come to a halt on the 25 Oop. On the right DDI, confirm that the stab position is set to 12 for both stabilators. I think While I need to recenter myself. There we go. Increase engine RPM to 80% and check that the temps on the IFE do not exceed 800 degrees Celsius. In a Hornet, you always take off an afterburner. Release the brakes and push. The always take off an afterburner. Interestingly, the F-14 does not take off an afterburner, regardless of whether it's on carrier or on land, as far as I know. Okay, increase engines to 80%. Okay, check that temperatures do not exceed 800. 
and then afterburner and release the brakes as you roll down the runway keep aligned down the middle with very small rudder inputs keep a small amount of back stick and the hornet will automatically rotate and fly off the run Break really the nice by moving the landing gear control handle in the up position then raise the flaps by setting the flap switch to the up auto position I hope everything's retracted you've just taken off in a hornet Still a little bit of flap, isn't it? Or maybe that's just uh I don't know. Well let's enjoy it for a little bit. We've taken off. Well, this is nice. It might be even easier to fly than the F-16. Climb rate's really good. Does not lose speed very much. So, at least apparently does not have that limiting factor that the uh, F-16 has on as default. Though I, again, think you can turn that off. Nope, we are past the speed of sound quite a lot, yeah. Supplement, engine, fuel. Okay, lots of fuel. Lots and lots of fuel. Let me just quickly do a speed check here. Uh, we we want to go higher for that though. Looks pretty legit to me. The intake shape looks like nostrils. I mean, it's just very very natural in a way well yeah it's only slowly accelerating at this point eventually I'm sure we'll get to higher Mach numbers but we're at Mach 1.5 and I don't have that much patience uh, it'll, it'll get up there where it's supposed to get up to eventually I suppose but yeah let's go on to the next tutorial Okay, it is HSI Overview and TACAN ADF Navigation time. Incidentally, I am an auditory learner, so hearing it is very beneficial to me compared to reading it. When people tell me, just look at the manual or something like that, I have serious trouble. I mean, not that I can't read or anything, I can read, but it's, uh, it's just better for me to remember things if I hear it. I think I've messed something up. Okay, that's not what I want. Tech can... Maybe I waited too long. 67... Okay, maybe it's good now? But the tutorial's not going on. Oh, now it says on. In the top left corner oh, now we've got Cobaletti here. Okay, so... Let's make sure we're slow enough to actually land at the place. In theory, the course we want to set is... Um, I forget how to... Oh, there we go. is the runway heading. There's Cobaletti. 0725. 
very smooth. Of course, uh, this is the least intense map as far as scenery is concerned. Oh, uh, what livery is this? Oh, nice. China Lake livery. And this is all shiny instead of uh, sort of dirty like the other one. The F-16 uh, trial only had one livery. Or at least one that I saw. Okay, if I manage to land this well enough, I'm gonna skip the landing tutorial if there is one. Okay, so uh, this range here also controls the range of the map below. I guess the flaps are always sort of like that? I don't know. <laughs> I definitely didn't uh, injure them this time. I'm actually pretty low right now. But it's very easy to get low with this thing. Oh, I need to turn though. Oh, a little bit slow. Okay. And taking longer to slow down. Did I bust the brakes or something? Maybe. Hmm. Uh, I guess it's all right. Seems to be working fine. Doesn't look like I busted anything. Yep, uh, brakes are nominal. Steering, well, less propensity to uh, tilt over than the F-16, that's for sure. What about the brakes? Um, okay, I wasn't using it. We do have it. The air brake. Okay, yeah, I think I can land this. No, no problem. Okay, I think I'm gonna pass on uh, waypoint navigation for now, as well as the VFR uh, landings and also the instrument approach and carrier taxi and takeoff hopefully is trivial I think what we want to see is carrier landing so let's do that and then proceed on to the weapons okay so the tutorial went through quite a lengthy description of the the flight path that I'm supposed to do and what I'm supposed to do and that was much longer than the F-14 one and much more detailed, but I doubt I remember all the details anyway. Now we are setting the TACAN. Okay, we want to set the radar altitude. Um, TACAN, let's see if I remember, 74. We are in transmit and receive. It's X and on. On. I think I don't know if I did that right okay so we want to notice at set the 370 feet um, and we will hear an audible in that case and then left EDI to HUD and right to FCS okay Alrighty then, let's see how this goes. Hail R check. Hook down. So many acronyms. 
Well, hopefully a lot of that is set properly. Okay, C. And H. Um, we have the arrestor hook down. Okay. Um, wait, uh, he might... Alright. Alright. Sometimes you have to reset it so he proceeds. Okay, there's the carrier. That last gate is really close to the carrier. I have to make another. That's closer than they said for the F14 tutorial. He says we have to turn at 3.5 G's at the speed, and it's supposed to be 1% of the airspeed. Uh, we're a little bit slow. Uh, not that I turn smoothly anyway. And we're supposed to be at idle. After this turn, we're supposed to be at 250 knots. Or close to it. Okay. Gear and flaps. Okay. There's the E bracket. Everything looks good. E bracket, come back, come back, come back. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, yeah, come on. Come back. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, apparently I'm wildly off. I'll get there eventually. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. That's the 370 feet warning. Uh, my screen is too small to see the ball, darn it. Uh, that E bracket is nowhere near. Oh, but I caught it. <laughs> that That's not how you're supposed to do it, I don't think. Th does he know that I did it? Um... There's a page with the, the landing result on it, right? I don't know if that's in the F-18. It was on the F-14. Well, it doesn't look like I broke anything. I wonder if we can hook up again. He didn't actually tell me to put the brakes out either. I wonder why the left rudder is like that. Maybe that's nominal, I don't know. Oh, I'm too... Uh, I don't... I think I'm askew. Ah, uh, boo brakes. Oh, maybe not actually. Um... Uh, I don't know if I can line up with that right now. You have to be really, really in line usually. Yeah. Uh, uh. Maybe I should just start the tutorial again. Um, it didn't actually. T uh, I didn't actually go through the carrier launch thing. Um, flat. Yeah, I'm. I'm at half. Uh, launch extend. I think that's what we need to do. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if we've hooked up or not. I need to check the controls for that. Mm. 
catapult hookup is you and then I think launches shift you or something okay it looks like something happened oh yeah okay Okay, yeah, back in the cockpit, please. Oh, God. No, not this. No, I can't see. Oh, God. Sender, yes. Uh. Okay, that's okay. It's all fine. It's fine now. I can take off. It's okay. Let's follow the gates again and land again. Okay, we've got the E bracket close this time, though. Alright, everything seems okay. Uh, you know, I'll have less flaps. Um, the e bracket goes way off when I. Oh, maybe it'll be fine. Okay. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Come back. Come back, E bracket. Alright. 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 I think. Yeah. yeah. Come back. Alright. 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 Oh no. No, that's bad. Okay. Yes. That's good. Okay, okay, uh, yeah, I just can't see the meatball very well on this screen, because I've got a small screen. No, 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 ow! Okay, well, I'll need more practice at that some other time. Okay, left shift selected. X. Note that the master mode was automatically set to AA. The left DDI displays the AA gun format. The HUD is in the gun auto acquisition mode, and the right DDI is in the AA radar page with air combat. Yes, says gun. Selected. Let's first take a closer look at the AA gun format page on the left DDI. Above the wing form, you see the number of gun rounds remaining, 578, and below that, you see the state of the master arm switch. On the left side of the page, you have the gun round type selection of M50 or PGU-28. You want to make sure that this selection matches what you have loaded on the aircraft. Press the M50 push button to select M50 rounds. Oh, did I do it too? Okay, there we In go. The bottom of the left format are I did it too quickly. High and low gun fire rate. Low fires the gun at 4,000 rounds per minute, and high fires the gun at 6,000 rounds per minute. Select the high. I wonder what the operant distinction is. I mean, with no radar okay, but he wanted high. The lead computing optical site, also I mean, the when do we use 4,000 and when do we use 6,000 is what I mean. You will fly your this will allow us we, to enter a target wingspan. We enter the target's On wingspan? The keypad, type in 37. Mm, okay. Ahead of you are two drone MiG-29s. Place them within the dash circle on the HUD to lock one of them up. Upon uh, doing I, so, you now have some uh, Oh no, oh no, oh no, no. Locked target. You have your VC closure, velocity and target range below it on the right side of the HUD. The locked target has a target designation Can I just shoot it now? And an aiming reticle with a pip. Uh, Along the outside of the aiming reticle is a line that indicates maximum gun range. Oh, I guess I can't. In the center of the aiming reticle. Okay, well, I don't think I'm my my trigger is actually gonna shoot anything. I tried pressing it a few times. Um. Uh, 
Okay. Oh, well, spacebar works. I should get my trigger working though. That time it didn't say shoot. I don't know where the second drone went. Whoops. They haven't told me how to use my radar properly yet. Oh, uh, there, there he is. Gosh darn it. Took a while to find, get him. And that was only because I was using the map cheats. Uh, I really need to parent the trigger to... How do I get the gun sight mode again? Oh, well. Ah! Slow down, slow down! Brakes! Gosh darn it! <laughs> oh, alright. I couldn't get him. I couldn't get the second one. Look at this livery. Very St. Patrick's Day kind of camo. Oh well, anyway. Uh, well, I couldn't get the second drone and I'm running out of fuel, so we'll have to move on to Sidewinders. Just checking my guns while he's discussing all the details about the AIM-9. So I know how to use the gun now, I think. The Sidewinder can be used on both Boresight mode and slaved to a radar lock target. I currently had the lesson paused as we discussed some of its features. Well, not paused enough. Sidewinder, press down on the weapon select switch or press left shift and S. Left shift S. When select DDI, press space bar to continue. Okay, left DDI. As with the AA gun, you have the remaining gun rounds and master arm indications. Oops, Along I just fired a sidewinder, didn't I? For aim nine loading, and I will unpause the lesson. Okay, space bar. You now have two MiG-29 drone targets ahead of you. Fly to place the reticle over one of them until you hear a higher pitched lock tone. You can either launch an aim nine now by pressing the trigger on the stick or space bar on the keyboard. Or initiate a self trap by pressing the cage uncage button on the throttle or pressing C. Once self tracking, launch an AIM 9. It may take more than one to bring down the MIG. Is there gonna be a higher pitch? Well, Splash it took one only. Keep an eye on the second MIG 29 and follow it. We will use a radar I always lose the second one. Follow the second drone. To lock no, I totally passed him again. Uh, I don't know if I like this mode very much. Oh, oh, that's the sun. Gosh darn it! The drone is flying close to the sun to spoof my sidewinder. That's. That's cheating. Well, I have not been able to lock up the target on radar, unfortunately. I'll take care of that some other time. I think we should move on to the Sparrow. Let me just let loose uh, one more Sidewinder before we go. There it goes. Oh, did I say Sparrow? I, it's the Amaram, actually, not the Sparrow. Thankfully. This is termed Mad Dog Launch, and the AMRAM will Mad launch Dog launch. The first target it detects within the dashed reticle area out to 10 miles. Below the dashed reticle is the designation for the selected weapon. AB for AIM-120B and AC for AIM-120CEC switch, or press the enter button. Oops, oops, Once oops. the target is locked, press spacebar to continue. Okay, enter. Okay, I think we've got it. With the target locked up, some new information is now available on the HUD. On the HUD is a large, solid circle that acts as both the AIM-120 allowable steering error circle and as the normalized in-range display or NERD circle. NERD circle. To keep yeah, the sorry. Steering dot inside the circle. Succeed, try again. Okay. Um, I don't seem to have control over the... Plane. 
Am I supposed to be able to turn? I don't know. Well, it says shoot. Okay, fine. It didn't let me... It's not letting me control the plane, actually. This is weird. It doesn't trust me anymore. Nine, eight, seven, six, four, three, two, one. Oh, I don't think it worked. Oh no, it did. Okay. Go ahead and lock up the target flying towards you and press spacebar. Don't engage it. If you don't see one on the radar, press the up arrow on the radar to increase its display range. Well, I see something on radar. Um, but why can't I fly? I don't understand this. This has gotten all arcadey. Oh. Okay, at this point I really need to be able to turn. This is weird. Okay. Oh, now we're flying. You can also use the AMRAM with no radar lock. Termed visual mode. Simply fly to place a target within 10 miles inside the HUD reticle and launch the missile. Oh. The AMRAM will go after the first target it detects, hostile or friendly. Practice using the AIM-120 against the remaining drones and press escape when you wish to end the lesson. Okay, it says shoot, but I'm gonna wait until 15. Uh, well, it's very convincing. Okay, but off we go. That was a, that's a heck of a path that the MRAM takes. Okay, and one more. Okay, it's been damaged and destroyed. See, they should really tell you how to get it into the right mode though. Because I just got it out of the right mode. Well, let's see if I can use this visual mode. I mean, it should be okay to use visual mode as long as we're inside the circle, right? Or no? Oh, yeah. It says it's destroyed. Okay, launch. I definitely have the radar in the wrong mode, but I'll need a whole tutorial about that. Oh, but I still destroyed it. This visual mode is pretty good, actually. Okay, I don't think there's any more bad guys. I got rid of them. Amram's always good, though. Amram's always good. So, yeah. Uh, yep, we don't have any more bad guys. Alright, so I think I'll leave it here. I've had some success, some failures. It's a good mix of things. But there you have it. The FA-18. Interesting plane. I really appreciate the extra tutorials, which I didn't get with the F-16. But there are many other planes to try, so we'll see how that goes. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.